Well, hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for being here today. Well, I want to continue along with our little seminar series here about fractals, fractal geometry, uh, flattening, surprise, chaos, all those good topics that are interrelated here. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous video about fractal complexity, fractal flattening, and chaos, I suggest you watch it first because I want to continue on a little bit from where we left off last time. In that video, uh, I'm talking about how natural systems that the universe creates tend to have fractal uh, structures, tend to be organized in a fractal way with increasing levels of detail at finer and finer scales. And that when you look around you, you see these fractals everywhere in all sorts of things that nature builds. And then when we look at modern human structures like buildings and roads and things like dams and even political and social structures that tend to be constructed around very even Euclidean lines that are deliberately uh, flattened or reduced with respect to their fractal complexity. These systems are really different than the way nature builds things. Today I want to show you why there's a difference between mathematically fractal objects and objects that are actually uh, found in nature. Because the objects that I showed you in the previous uh, video are actually computer-drawn images. And as you can see, this fractal background behind me is a computer-drawn fractal image. But in reality, the uh, fractals that we find in nature don't continue on and on forever at a smaller and smaller scale. For example, if you look at a typical uh, fractal, the Mandelbrot set, which uh, we can we can see here, uh, the farther you go in to magnify it, the more detail you see, and it never ends. It keeps going and going and going, right? And that's the general idea of fractals. But the fractals we find in nature obviously are not going to go on forever like that because eventually you're going to get to the uh, scale of atoms and then of quarks and then at that point you're just simply dealing with math and there's really no substance there at all so fractals in nature don't just continue on forever and ever and ever but what we can talk about is this general idea of graininess and roughness and that's how fractals apply to the world that we see around us um, real world fractals have that quality that the more you look at the surfaces the more fine detail you see and they're grainy and rough and they keep going on that way for quite a while i mean our bodies are good examples of it we have you know these surfaces and then there's more detail that comes out of those surfaces like my beard here and even on those hairs you're going to find more detail for quite a while as you zoom in with your microscope and those are how real world fractals actually exist and we can describe these systems with the idea of a fractal dimension and so this is what i want to talk about is fractals are actually objects that are between dimensions they're interdimensional so think about it for a second if you look at an example like a cloud uh, what sort of dimension does a cloud have i mean at first thought you'd probably say hey it's uh, three-dimensional, right? But not exactly correct, because if you go very close to a cloud, and you've probably been close to clouds in planes when you've been going through them, right? You can see that they have a lot of space in them, so they don't completely fill the three-dimensional space that they're in. And typically, clouds have fractal dimensions 2.2 or 2.3, believe it or not. They're between two dimensions, which is a plane, and three dimensions, which is a cube, because they don't completely fill the space. So clouds are an example of objects that are interdimensional, believe it or not. <laughs> Natural paranormal objects. And then if you want to look at another example of this, we could look at something like the coastline of England, uh, which has a fractal dimension. This is kind of a famous example of 1.21 or something like that. So why does the coastline have a fractal dimension of 1.2? Well, it's more than a line, which is a one-dimensional object, but it's less than a complete plane, right? But the idea of a coastline having a fractal dimension is simply this notion that it's very 
fractured and rough. And the closer you look in on that coastline, the more details you see. And you see bays and inlets and so forth, all the way down to the uh, scale of sand, if you were to keep measuring it. So basically, the smaller and smaller ruler that you have to measure the length of a coastline, the more you're going to find that's there, because as your ruler gets smaller, you're going to be able to go in inlets and bays and estuaries and things like that. So basically, the fractal dimension of a coastline describes the fact that it's grainy, it's rough, and it's kind of fractured, and it doesn't resolve to a line. So a coastline is also a fractal object, an interdimensional object, and different coastlines would have different fractal dimensions. If you compare it to the coastline of Norway, for example, it's Norway's going to have a lot more of these fjords and inlets than England does, so it's actually going to have a higher fractal dimension. So what's the whole point of all this? If fractals described objects that are between dimensions, what's your fractal dimension? I mean, if you think about it, you exist three-dimensionally, you sort of fill the space that you're in, but you actually extend a little beyond three-dimensional space. And the way I mean that is, if you think about the dimension of time, time being the fourth dimension in Einstein's uh, general relativity, you actually extend out into time and you change over time, right? And not only that, you can imagine things that are going to be happening in the future. You can imagine things that happened in your past. And so in that sense, you are more than a three-dimensional object because you can actually conceive of the fourth dimension of time and use your imagination to extend into time back and forth. So I would argue that you're more than a three-dimensional object or somewhere between three and four dimensions. Maybe some of you are even more than four dimensions. But that's the idea here is that computer generated fractals are kind of an approximation of what fractals are. They keep going on and on forever. But real world fractals actually have a fractal dimension that goes to some sort of limit at a small scale or at a very large scale. But in between those extremes, we can kind of describe how much of the space it fills or how much of the space time it fills. So in a sense, you're an interdimensional object, too. And that's the whole point. So thanks again for watching this series, and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care for now, and bye.